speak about this video courtesy of Unique regarding Joey Diaz um, explaining why he's quitting the podcast. I'm actually, I'm actually surprised. I'm not going to lie. I'm really surprised about this, um, that he's quitting it. I would have assumed when he switched to being audio only because he made the announcement recently, I think I made a clip about it where Joey Diaz explained that he's only going to be doing audio only if he's podcast on more video, which is not that, you know, uncommon. Bill Burr, one of my favorite podcasts I listen to on a weekly, he does his show without any sort of video on it. And I think he has somebody uploaded it on his channel also with no video. So I also love that. Um, but I'm surprised that Joey Diaz, knowing that his fans will stick by him if he did audio only, is going to do no vid no podcast at all and just stick to doing Patreon content. I'm surprised. But on another end, I'm also not surprised, having listened to a lot of his stuff over the years and being a fan of Joey Diaz, I also know that he's been kind of burned out by things in general. He's not essentially loving you know, life in, as a comedian, loving life as an entertainer in general in the limelight. He's kind of had it in general and I think that's kind of honorable to be like you know what I'm not being my best self on these places and these spots and these platforms I'm not giving my all I don't really care that much about it anymore I'm gonna gracefully bow out instead of like having the game bow out for you I think more people need to do that but these guys and girls in the comedy entertainment industry once they get a taste of the fame and the money they just can't let go there's no aspect of them kind of unwinding or scaling things back. It was just this constant, constant fame, fame, fame. So there's something that I kind of like about the idea of Joey Diaz stepping away from it. But I'm just a little bit surprised. This is a clip taken from Unique's Joey Diaz. It says, explains why he's quitting his podcast. Let's play the clip. I uh, had an interesting couple of days for starters again. I'm very sorry about the podcast. Listen, man, I started the podcast to get out of my funk. Uh, it helped me. I didn't just want to be a fucking bumpy sitting here. But let's face it. Once I got my head together, I still couldn't fucking function. I still couldn't think of things. And I just got sick and tired of faking the funk. I'm a lot better with you guys on this podcast. It's a little bit more personal. I tried to carry this over into the joint, but it just wasn't working. You know, I did Andrew Schultz yesterday. And again, you go on these podcasts. These podcasts are successful because of the energy, guys. My podcast had no energy no more. I was getting burnt out just by the powers of B. And it was just time to shut it down like I did with the comedy in January. Just to see what the fuck you really want to do. I will continue to Patreon. This week we will not have a movie of the week. Because to be honest with you guys, we were going to... Anyway, you got the gist of it, right? You got just what you're saying. Um, I personally think... The Joey Diaz podcast died the moment Lee Sayat left the original pod, which was the Church of What's Happening Now. Um, I think when Lee Sayat left, or they decided to end that, when Joey Diaz wanted to move back home and be closer to his family, that's when the podcast ended. Even he did try to restart it and have something to do during the pandemic and lockdown. He didn't want to be with his family all the time and kind of wanted an outlet to speak about certain things and rant and whatnot. The joint was never going to replicate the church what's happening right now. It ended when Lee Sayat left. But I also have to give Joey Diaz, I feel like, a lot of credit because I feel like other people in his position, especially other comedians and stuff, would have tried to have paid for Lee Sayat to go and move out with him to New Jersey or said to him to move out there with him so they could continue the show the same way because they just couldn't let go of the you know attention that he got them and whatever it may be but I feel like the fact that Joey Diaz took it upon himself because I remember I, I'm a fan of Joey so I pay attention to the show I remember he specifically told Lee that he wanted him to go and live his life he was always a bit guilty he felt like that he was robbing Lee of his youth and stuff which is dumb because Lee loved fucking Joe Diaz and still loves him to this day um he was happy to be there but for the what for the longest time Joey kind of felt a bit guilty that you know he was getting him hooked on drugs he was getting him high all the time he was taking up his time that he wasn't going out and doing things by himself in terms of being a comedian or making it or doing a podcast blah 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 and he maybe thought in some respects also he maybe had a fear that Lisa might end up like a Brendan Shaw. He might just hitch his wagon to Joey. And in, in, in a way, it means like he's entirely, you know, forever kind of tied to him. And it means that also Joey doesn't have agency in his own career and he also has to kind of keep it going because he has this guy to depend on. So I felt like it was the most selfless move in his regard, Joey Diaz, to say, hey, Lee, you're still in your prime. You still have a lot of potential coming up and you're young and shit. Go out and explore life. You know what I mean, I'm going to go back home and move my family. You go out there and explore life and do your thing. 
obviously I'm not naive enough to know or to not believe that there was more to it. I'm sure all the cancellations also added to the extra fear and kind of tendency to run away from the industry LA and kind of move away to LA and move away to flipping New Jersey and because of his family. I'm sure there's a lot of self-preservation involved there also. When Chris D'Elia, Brian Callen, all these guys were getting cancelled, even when the Louis C.K. shit happened, it kind of shunned a really stark light on the comedy scene. And all these male comics started to feel really nervous because they've all got crazy skeletons in their closet because of the times they've been on the road and they've cheated a million times and they've maybe fucked up and did a couple of dilly dalliance with people that you shouldn't have. Maybe they've done some rapey stuff. Maybe they've done some pedo stuff, whatever it may be. It made everybody in the scene nervous, clearly. And I think at the time when that Amy Kaufman girl who wrote the op-ed or the opening piece on destroying fucking um, Joey Diaz, right? And essentially she was kind of putting the fear of God in everybody in that scene. And I remember there was a period of time, if you remember your law, just after Brian Callen got cancelled, there was a period in time where there was a rumour going around that that Amy Kaufman girl was allegedly going around to different comics, going to different clubs and stuff and getting real accounts on these horrifying stories about comedians and what they maybe have done with women and shit. And allegedly that was a story that was coming out. And I think Joey even spoke about it in his podcast and everyone was getting nervous because it was meant to be a big op-ed that was going to, or article or whatever piece that was going to trash everybody and expose what, every, what goes on in the kind of dark, you know, underbelly of the fucking scene. And I think everyone got nervous, which is why, what's his face? Um, I think that's why Eddie Bravo kind of ran away. Like, cause you know, he has a real business and a real life and shit. He couldn't risk getting canceled for that and whatever. So a lot of those guys ran away for that. So it's not surprising, but a part of me, a part of me feels like this is definitely one of those things that should be heralded because there isn't enough people in comedy and entertainment who are willing to just step away from the limelight again because he's still going to be doing content he's still going to be out here doing bits and bobs he's not going to be he's not going like he's going to return to a life of being a private citizen but it should be somewhat commendable and somewhat praised if you decide to just step back it should be a little bit like hey you know i've had my fun it was good where it lasted i'm going to step back because constantly what you know enjoying the sound of like i'm a nobody and i get tired of the sound of my own voice right my own voice legitimately um tires me sometimes so i can't imagine what it must be like for guys and girls on this level guys and girls on this level how they must feel where they're constantly making content constantly talking constantly giving hot takes constantly sharing their opinion constantly weighing in constantly it's just too much at a certain point like just enough already enough relax that's what i think should be happening but they don't do that so I think it needs to be given some encouragement. So big up Joey Diaz for at least stepping away from the microphone a little bit. Um, and, you know, being one of the only people in that kind of scene or community of Joey, Joe Rogan extended universe type of dudes who decided to do so. I think that is somewhat commendable in that respect. I'm not going to lie. 